not a big deal, but I just passed uh, where I was for my best lifts versus Ermi's. Not a big deal. Next up, Dennis. After that, who knows? Who knows? Can I do it? Probably not, right? Probably not. Um, I'm the strongest I've ever been. In all the lifts that matter. Uh, I'm, I'm a few percentage above where I was for Dennis, uh, which was my previous best. Are we going to see Ryan Bowen at East vs West once again? One more reason why I believe Levan Saginashvili can defeat Devon Lerett and why was Levan removed from the world arm wrestling rankings. And finally, a new female arm wrestling superstar. On April 20 and 21, Australian Arm Wrestling Federation is going to organize the Oceana East vs West qualifier in Sydney. Five male classes, 75 kilos, 85, 95, 105 and 105 plus. Two female classes below 70 and above 70. Top two place finishers in each weight class are going to get an opportunity to compete in the final West qualifier which is going to be held in North America. And interestingly, Ryan Bowen put out a poll on his Instagram asking whether he should go for this qualifier or not. And as expected, almost everyone said yes. So I have no doubt that if Ryan goes there in Sydney, he's going to win for sure or at least place top two and qualify for the North American final qualifier. But what when he goes there? Can he win there as well? So to answer that question, let's take a look at in the hook rankings for 242 pounds in North America. Todd Hutchings and John Brzezink are already there, so they won't be competing in the qualifier. Marcio Barboza has been invited without qualifying, but he lost his last match badly. Now I'm not sure how exactly the qualification requirements work, which athletes need to qualify and which don't. Assuming Marcio may need to qualify this time, then in that case Ryan Bowen may be in some trouble. Pavlo I don't think is going to be able to cut to 105 kilos. Matt Mask can be some trouble because he qualified for the East vs West event and lost to Frank Lamparelli. So I'm assuming he may need to qualify once again. If that is the case then Matt is going to beat Ryan for sure. Other than that, I think Jerome Loud also has a great shot at the opportunity of beating the boat Ryan Bowen. So it's not like if he goes there, he's going to qualify for sure. He may be in big trouble depending on who shows up. Since WL 2018, when Devon showed up over 260 pounds for the first time, the topic of Devon Laird's body weight has always been a big hype conversation. This time, I think the question is pretty much already answered. Devon said in his latest video that he's weighing around 267 pounds in the morning. So assuming he's 270 in the evening, because matches are during evening time, maybe he gains 3-4 pounds until the Levan match, until a week before that. And once the match arrives or is almost about to arrive a week ago, he stops lifting weights, he eats equally as much as he was eating before, then he gains 4-5 pounds more. So my assumption is Devon shows up at somewhere around 276 pounds on match day. In shoes and clothes, I won't be surprised if Devon even shows up at around 280 pounds, which is almost going to be the same weight as the previous time against Levan Saginashvili. Even overtrained, training like three times a day, I am the strongest I have ever been in all the lifts that matter. I am a few percentage above where I was for Dennis, which was my previous best. Devon is clearly so confident that he has a shot of winning this match. He's stronger, but the question is how much stronger? Devon's analysis was that he needed to be 6% more stronger in the 2022 match. So is that gap closed? Only Devon knows, only Levan knows. But one more thing that Devon knows is that in order to win this super match, first he needs to believe in himself. The fans are going to believe in him, but that isn't going to help a lot. Devon needs to believe in himself first. And I'm not sure how much percentage he gave himself in the first match. Maybe he thought his chances are like 30%, but right now I would assume he has in his mind a percentage of at least 55 or maybe even 60 on a good day. I will allow myself now to start believing that I could have won last time and I'm not getting injured this time. So clearly the mind games 
विद हिमसेल्फ हैव स्टार्टेड ही इज ट्राइंग टू गेट इन हिज ओन हेड टू बिलीव दैट ही कैन विन दिस सुपर मैच and we all talk about how unlucky devon was because his bicep tore in the previous match but we rarely talk about levan saginashvili's strength that did that to devon imagine how frustrated levan must feel when some people give the entire credit of levan's victory to devon's injury and that can be kind of frustrating levan is also probably wishing that that does not happen this time or maybe if it does then people will believe that two times it cannot be coincidence and it was levan's strength that did that to devon he is going to have to be considerably stronger than me i am not sure that he is right now so once again not many people discuss devon's left handed practice match against levan saginashvili well it wasn't a match i i should say a practice pull with levan in that pull levan kind of waited patiently in the center and then once he realized that he can go sideways then he went sideways and even in that match his wrist kind of slightly cracked back we all are just assuming including devon that if levan's wrist goes back slightly it is going to be over i am not totally sold on this idea i think levan still may have some options what if he comes back to the center once again adjusts his position slightly and then hits again i wouldn't be surprised that if a former multiple times waf champion who was not head and shoulders above everyone else at that time so he needed technicality during those times can do that to devon lerat right now there is a small chance but that still may happen the result of this super match will decide the number one super heavyweight arm wrestler in the world but if we go to x sport news and check out the world arm wrestling rankings levan saginashvili isn't there anymore let's check the reason for that levan saginashvili from georgia was removed from the rankings because levan versus ermes took place on 25th of february 2023 This one year rule was used since 2017 we removed competitors who didn't compete for more than one year please see the change log so i do agree with this rule if not completely then at least partially the champions shouldn't just be allowed to sit on their title by quoting there is no one to challenge him for the title there should be some matches whether we believe that those matches are going to be close or not but for the title matches if the arm wrestler is holding some kind of title like a east versus west champion then maybe it can be extended up to 18 months for everyone else it can be 12 months but with that logic i don't understand how if gini prudnik is still on this list because as far as i remember his last right arm match was against devon lerat and since then he hasn't competed or maybe in some small tournament in europe i'm not sure how things are working out here with that logic gennady quickvinia will also be soon out of this list because he competed against devon about 10 months ago and he isn't going to compete in next 2 months hangin terzi shared a photo of his student nisa jamadan winning four medals at the turkish national championships two in the under 23 division and two in the senior division both left and right in both classes so nisa has already competed at king of the table and the views that that match got is more than almost every other match that we have seen 1.2 million views so she has the ability to go viral and she's obviously talented that's why i believe we are going to see more and more of her in the near future in these two big stages and when i was searching nisa on youtube these two ladies showed up irina gladkaya and nisa nisa is inexperienced well compared to irina of course she may be weaker but she's slightly heavier i think maybe in a year this can be a great super match to happen at east versus west or king of the table these were the top two comments from the previous video and these are the members only comments thanks for watching like the video and subscribe